I understand there are 25 different nations represented here, and each of you come from a different perspective. Um, you all have a very important part to play in the International Bar Code of Life, but I think you would all agree with me um, that the International Bar Code of Life begins not just with a small DNA sequence, it begins with the commitment and passion of Paul Hebert. Paul Hebert is a remarkable individual who never seems to take no for an answer, who never <laughs> seems to give up, and who inspires all of us to think about the importance of uh, diversity on the planet that we live in. So may I ask Paul Hebert to come forward and say a few words. Well, it's at moments like this that you know you chose the right profession <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Boy, oh boy, Glenn, I'm glad I'm not competing with you for a seat in Parliament. <laughs> that was just an unbelievably beautiful statement of our country, what it stands for in our city and our province. Thank you. And um, there are an awful lot of people that have played a huge role in this. I'm afraid I'm feeling a little bit emotional uh, because there's a bit of a dream. I grew up in Kingston. First thing I remember is catching a bee and falling, in my usual sort of semi-spastic way, <laughs> cutting my hand, ending up in hospital, think I was dying, but never getting smart enough to stop collecting those bugs. <laughs> and spending much of my youth collecting them and then going to New Guinea and finally realizing there was too much diversity on our planet to do a really good job of understanding them and walking away from it and walking in the Arctic for 20 years where there were so few species I could almost grapple with biodiversity. So the dream of a kid was to understand life on our planet. And when you spoke to why this is so important, um, life on our planet, the average species that we're looking at as scientists have been here for 4 million years. 65 million years ago, if we'd been sitting here this evening, we would have had one hell of a experience. A giant meteorite crashed into the Yucatan Peninsula, flames flew across our continent, dust settled, and one-third of the species were left, were lost. And we're now going to provoke the same thing. Ten million years after that extinction event, the life on our planet, planet was impoverished. And as I walk through the yard in my backyard, or the fields of Ontario, I get to see sites around our planet, the magnificent life that we're surrounded with, that have been fellow travelers with our species and the species that we came from and we're threatening them with extinction and we as a species are spending billions of dollars, ten billion dollars on Large Hadron Collider we can find a billion dollars a year to support a scientific enterprise that's looking at particles too small for us ever to see we spend billions of dollars a year building telescopes that look out into space at things that are too far away ever for us to touch. And I admire it. It's a, you know, it's a magnificent property of our species that we wish to understand the world around it and all its aspects, but I think something's been missed. We don't have the giant projects focused on life on our planet, these things that we interact with every day. And so this project uh, is an effort, and it was difficult to do this as a grand coalition. I understand why the physicists and astronomers were forced to form grand alliances that took on these big projects that have led to deep insights into our world and have brought much benefit to humanity. But this is one of the first giant projects in biodiversity science, and I'm so pleased to be in the company of a scientist from around this world. Uh, this project owes very little uh, to me as an individual. It owes a lot to uh, the people I work with, the 60 people at uh, our institute at the University of Guelph. It owes a vast amount to the scientists in this room that have played critical roles in investigating, in supporting, in building deeper understanding. So I thank you all for finding time to come to Canada to join us uh, in this celebration of what I think is actually going to be uh, the first stage. We're determined 
it's going to be the first stage in a transformation of, of the life sciences, of this area of life sciences, to turn it into a big science dimension so that we can address the grand ideals of the Convention on Biological Diversity to protect life on our planet so that it's not just in uh, an extract on a, in a freezer somewhere, uh, it's not just in a photo, but that it's living and we're sharing the planet with it a hundred years now. We must do better. Um, for much of my career, our country uh, supported science, but only to a certain level, and I'm not going to complain about it because there are many countries that are represented here which are in very difficult situation to raise money for any scientific activity. But Canada has transformed, our province has transformed, and I'm so proud to live uh, in this province and in this country that realizes that we must invest money in science. You mentioned the magnitude of the budget. It's large, uh, certainly for a small country. We benefited from support from the Ministry of Research and Innovation. You were, in fact, the first organization that supported this project. It was a brave move. Uh, two years ago, uh, a $5 million contribution to this project. You've helped us build the buildings that this research is, is happening in, and now you're helping with further investment and in allowing us to push forward with the, the sequencing that's required to advance it, or the informatics that's required for this project. There have been other key partners Genome Canada has been a hugely supportive organization, and we're very proud. I mean, I'm one tiny part of that Genome Canada family, but, but it's really placed Canada on the world stage in terms of genomics. So that's a wonderful change in our society. We have the Canada Foundation for Innovation, of course, that's helped in building those buildings. NSERC, our National Science and Engineering Research Council, has committed about six million dollars to help advance some of the early work in this project. And most recently, the International Development Research Center, and I'm very, very happy, and this attracted a lot of attention at this meeting, because it takes us back to the nations that are so biodiversity rich, that need help to protect and inventory their biodiversity. And IDRC stepped forward and has provided some money, it's not enough money to aid the world, the developing world, but it's a role model, and we're determined to see that uh, adopted by other nations. So Canada, I think, uh, has allowed us, the support in this province and this country, has allowed us to light a fire, to create some of the infrastructure that's required to roll out um, a larger program that's going to lead to a whole new accessibility to biodiversity information on our planet. The discussions at this over the last couple of days uh, were really important, I think, to those of us in the project because we heard much optimism. It was sort of audacious when three years ago we came together and said, we'll do 500,000 species, species, damn it, and 5 million barcodes. I didn't really think that we could do it. And actually, when we came together two days ago, I didn't really think we could do it. And now I'm leaving after discussions thinking, Damn it, we are going to do it. And in fact, if we're not careful, we're going to do more of it. <laughs> and uh, there were much uh, positive developments uh, in terms of nations committing, following this early investment by Canada. So uh, I also want to thank the government agencies in Canada that have, that have supported some of our early work, the Ministry of um, Natural Resources and our Ministry of, of uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food. Uh, environment. Everyone's been a partner in this with this in this country and now I think it's going global and it's a wonderful analog to when you spoke about our city and our country the way it's going global I think this project's going global so I thank you colleagues uh, for joining in this venture uh, I thank the funders in our country and I thank uh, many individuals uh, my home university obviously things don't happen if you don't have the support of your president and he does know how to say no, damn it, but I'm working on him. <laughs> and Christian Burks has played uh, an awful important role in.